bless God for another day, an opportunity to bring you the living word of God. Jim Davis coming at you once again from Cornerstone Church right here in Jacksonville, Florida. And come visit us sometime if you're in the local area catching this broadcast. Our address is 7144 Atlantic Boulevard, right here in Jacksonville, Florida. And our zip code is 32211. Thank you for tuning in. I also want to uh, extend uh, to the you know our viewing audience uh, to keep it up. What I mean by keep it up, uh, we've gained some subscribers. We're excited about that, not because of me, because we're trying to. Jesus said, "Go in all the world, spread the, spread the gospel." Yeah. Spread the good news. Can you say amen? amen? And so, you know, the last couple sessions that we had, you know, with my brother Matt Gober, with his testimony and the things that we shared, you know, from uh, being honest with yourself, right? Amen? And bringing in the harvest. Uh, I bring that up tonight before we open with our broadcast of what the Lord gave me kind of last minute this afternoon to start on. And I know I will not finish it tonight, but we're going to see what the Holy Spirit does. Uh, he might change the whole thing. That's okay, too. Amen. And we will pray in a second. But I want to say, I want to encourage, and I'm obeying God in this, to those of you um, to, that are particularly tuning in or you may catch this for the first time, hey, don't turn it off. Okay? Hang in there a minute. We understand that these are Wednesday night services, so they're an hour service. Um, you know, and how to eat an elephant one bite at a time. I understand that basically YouTube, the way it is, you know, they're really designed to grab people in five, 10, 15 minute windows. But, you know, it'd be like trying to read your Bible once or one scripture once, well, I'm, I'm done, I'm good, put it up. No, you spend a lifetime doing it. So as for the broadcast, you know, I encourage you when you tune in, you know, get out your pad and pencil this if you're a hungry, hungry, hungry believer, amen? Yeah. A Matthew 5, 6 believer. Uh, that's those that hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. Take some notes, bless God write them down and uh, take and, and just feed, let, let the word of God get into your, deep down into your spirit. In fact, we'll be talking a little bit about that tonight, how that works and how important that is. But at any rate, uh, uh, that was a very powerful thing. I did it by way of the instruction of the Lord. Of course, I, I do everything I, by the instruction of the Lord, by two people, the Lord and of course my pastor. <laughs> Amen. But uh, uh, it really touched a lot of lives. I even got phone calls off of it, too, as a result of it. And uh, from people, obviously, that knew me in the area. And it, um, it, it, I, it just something that I'm just so grateful that I was able to come across that and share that. And so uh, I'm, a, I'm a guy that loves fruit, and we love you. Let's pray and we'll get into what God gave us for this evening. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you most of all from the bottom of my heart for the privilege and opportunity once again to come before these, your precious sheep worldwide. Less of me, more of you, in fact, none of me and all of you. Let me once again proclaim the oracles of God boldly. Let the word of God flow out of me with accuracy. And let it land on the hearts of hearers tonight throughout the world. Let the incorruptible seed of your word then take root and resonance if there within their inner man. And let it manifest itself into a harvest that only the <coughs> word of God can do in this world, in the life of a person who chooses to receive it and believe it. And if you think, if you're in agreement with me, you think that's something that's a good thing, would you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. Glory to God. Tonight our subject, and I got this, and glory to God, there's Sandy Bell. Bless God. This blue. My bell, Sandy Bell. Bless God. The faithful. The word of God in heaven, we'll wait, we're gonna let her get seated and comfortable. See, we ain't got nothing to love with people around here if you're watching this broadcast with us, God. So at any rate, uh, we thank God for Sandy. So see now we're gonna make you famous. You're going out worldwide, okay? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God in heaven. Thank you, Lord. It's okay to have a little bit of fun in church too, huh? Sure. Although I ain't funny, I'm serious about it. One of our most faithful members. All our members are faithful, bless God. Yes. And I thank God for every one of them. And uh, I thank God for my wife, too. I, I'll go ahead and say this. Y'all know me. I go ahead and I just do what the Holy Ghost tells me to do. Uh, she didn't know this. I never tell her what I'm going to talk about. Uh, it's not because we're doing it. Because, you know why? I don't know a lot of times to the last minute. So we don't really discuss generally what I'm going to uh, minister on Wednesday nights. But, uh, 
a lot of the things where she sharpens me and challenges me, <laughs> well, it is just like God. He'll turn around and uh, then he'll say, you know what, I want you to kind of look into that a little bit. You know, there might be something there, you know. And like all messages, this is as much or more for me than it is people that I'm privileged to minister it to. Glory to God. And tonight, the title of our message tonight is Soul Gates. Soul Gates. We've heard of having a soul mate in our life. Well, we're going to talk about soul gates. And you go, well, what's up with that? Gates. Hmm. You know, as a former military uh, man, I was in the Marine Corps. And you know, military bases is an example, or any high security place. You can be at the White House, be anywhere. You know, any, any important place in the world. Um, uh, they have security guards there at the gate, don't they? Mm-hmm. And they're armed. In the body of Christ, we need to be armed too, and armed with knowledge. But you go, well, why don't we call this soul gates? Because the word of the Lord says in Jeremiah 3.15, I find this interesting, that he gives us pastors after his own heart. Talk about the Father. Amen? You can look at it, Jeremiah 3.15. It says he gives us pastors, I'm just quoting it, after his own heart that feeds you with knowledge and understanding, very critical, that's what we're here to get tonight. But I find this very interesting. And to watch for your souls. To watch for your soul. Amen. Turn in your Bible and we'll talk a little bit more about that. As you're turning to the soul, let me make a comment as you're turning there. Turning where? Matthew chapter 16. Just turn there. Matthew the 16th chapter. The soul, understanding our having an, a proper understanding of our soul in this regard. You are a spirit, or we are spirit beings. God is a spirit. John 6, 63, in fact, says us that worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's because he is a spirit, a spiritual being. So are we. We are a spirit, but tonight our focus is on the soul. And you're going to be amazed how much Jesus had to say about the soul, okay? And uh, the soul, uh, in other words, our, our, we're made up, we're triunion beings like God. We are a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a physical body. Our spirit and soul resides in this physical body. Now, when we're born again, it's important, too, the Holy Spirit would have you say this, too. When a person gets born into God's kingdom, or what's referred to in the Bible from John chapter 3, getting born again, he's talking about being born of the spirit and not being born of the flesh. Well, this is critical in this regard too. Not only is salvation made available, but watch this. The Holy Spirit comes in and takes up residency on the inside of the believer. Can you say amen? Amen. I will dwell in them. I will walk in them. I'll be their God, and they'll be my people. Okay? The spirit, once a person is born again, and their spirit man is renewed, uh, there's nothing wrong with their spirit. The battlefield is not so much in the spirit. Now, watch it is in the spirit realm. So let me bring clarity to that. You should go, well, wait a minute, no, you're getting off track. You know, we can wrestle a lot against flesh and blood, and principalities, powers, and dark, spiritual wickedness in high places. That's a reality. But those spiritual wickedness in high places and all that, the devil works in, here's his arena. He doesn't work in your spirit. He works in your soulish realm, in the soul, in the mind, in the will and in your emotions. Mm-hmm. It's going to, or in your thinker, your feeler, and your chooser. Say with me the mind, the, mind. the will, the will, and the emotions. The emotions. Or my thinker, thinker. my feeler, feeler, and my emotions. My chooser. This is the area that the enemy comes after. Now, I'll say this too before we start reading in Matthew 16. Listen carefully. Do not turn off the video. You want to listen to this. So ABC, NBC, uh, 
by Fox, I don't care what channel. Watch the JC channel, bless God, the Jesus Christ channel. There's an announcement. Now we're hearing all this stuff about now, you know, well, enough that we heard all about COVID. We're not, we're not. Listen, I'm one, I don't believe in being so spiritually minded of no earthly value. That is not what God, the Bible says wisdom is a principal thing. Yeah. With all that wisdom, get understanding. I'm a big wisdom guy. Okay, because you can get out there all flaky spiritually. But if you, you know, stay in the word, you find out the truth, the truth will make you free. Amen? So before I make this comment I'm fixing to make, we don't want to violate wisdom. I call it violated wisdom. Mm -hmm. But it's the, it's, the new, it's the new thing that the world, I said the world, that's why Jesus said live in the world, but not of the world, okay? It's their new push. And it's this variant now, COVID, this other strand. And why am I going there with that? Because of 2 Timothy 1.7. You can turn there if you want to. I went from Matthew and dropped all the way down to 2 Timothy. We will go back to Matthew 16. Because you haven't been given a spirit of fear. And notice it is a spirit. An evil spirit. But power, love, and a sound mind. Now where did I say that the soul part of the soulless realm is? And the mind. The battlefield is in the mind. And we're going to see in a minute when we do move back up into Matthew, into G, we're going to look at uh, several things out of the mouth of Jesus. But we're going to find out, we're going to really find out how important what we see, be careful what you look at, gates. I said it's called soul gates. The eye gate, the ear gate. Entry has to come at some point. Yes. Now, I left the mouth out of it, but understand, it also comes by way of words. But those words are what comes into your ears and even into your seeing. You turn on television, and you're just looking at that constantly, everything that's going out there, you know. And, and it, I'm going to be so bold as to say this. I'm excited about our broadcast. I'm excited about the people that are that are catching and our, you know, our viewing audience seems to be expanding and growing. Well, I'm not surprised because he's the one. He brings the increase. Yes, he does. Not a man. Yeah. It's God Almighty. Yeah. Okay, it's his word. Okay, he exalts his word. Yes. Even above his name. How about them apples? Yeah. Like apples? How about that? Them apples. But this business about what we, what we hear and what we see is an attempt of the enemy through tell a vision. Let's tell, let's tell them and, uh, and let's project. And by the way, too, we're going to get a new projector, Pastor Shelby Park. We get technology to fix it. We ain't no tell what you're going to see coming up. You better stay tuned, I'm telling you. That's the extra. Tell a vision. Let's project in front of believers as well as non-believers. And non-believers just eating up the spoon. But I'm telling you, you don't heed the words of Jesus and be careful what you see. We're going to look at that. And what you hear, next thing you know, you're becoming a part of it. That's right. I started to say, thank you, Lord. He brought some bad quick remembrance. I'll let it slip. But he didn't. Take our broadcast. One of the things, and I shared this even with Pastor just real quick. Of course, we talk about a lot of things. But um, we were talking about um, YouTube. And, you know, naturally, we go to the, there's a lot of a lot of wonderful spiritual material on YouTube. But, I mean, there is. By great ministries and ministers and stuff. But at the same time, if you go just to the regular YouTube channel, whether it be on your phone or whatever, you may see, you know, a, a couple ministry things. The next thing you see, you're going you're gonna to see some, uh, some girls walk around half naked. Or you're going to see how many porn stars died. You know, uh, and you got to flip. You don't got to. You get to. If, you, if you're a believer, you got you to you skim by them. Amen. So you got to go by them. Mm -hmm. But what the enemy would have you do, and men and women both have to be very careful with this. Well, let me just click. That is pretty. Let me click on that. I get it. 
gates. And the gateway is into the soul. Okay? All right. Now, now we can look at Matthew 16. Thank you for letting me just kind of get that out there. Yeah, I can tell this is going to be one of those things. We'll probably be on this for a couple Wednesday nights, no doubt. Yeah, I announced this in a while. This is more that holy word from the St. John's River right here in Jacksonville, Florida. Now, if you come to our church, I'll give you a bottle of it. Amen. <laughs> Matthew 16, bless God. I know, I'm going to move tonight. It's my wife's fault. All right, Matthew chapter 16. That's what happens when a man gets happy. All right, yeah, she's been pretty good to me. All right, here we go. Matthew, uh, 16th chapter. When you're there, say, I have it. I have it. Oh, I love it when I hear them. I like to shout back at me. All right, here we go. This is Peter's declaration about Jesus, but I want you just to tune in and listen to this. All right, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, uh, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Notice he came as the Son of Man. Amen. Okay, and they said, some say that they're near John the Baptist, and some say you're Elijah, and others say you're Jeremiah, or you're one of the prophets. He said unto them, all right, but who do you say that I am? Question mark. That's in red by Jesus. And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ or the anointed one. Okay, I taught another lesson. So anytime you see Christ, you want to translate that. Christ is not Jesus' last name. Jesus was and is the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God and the Word became flesh and dwelt among them and they beheld His glory and blessed God of the only begotten of the Father. Can you say amen? Amen. Jesus means is Emmanuel or God with us, among us, if you will. Okay? Christ, the anointed one and His anointing is very important or I wouldn't bring it up. Thou art the Christ, or the anointed one, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, look how he responded to the answer. Blessed. That's what we want to be. He says, Blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood is not revealed it to thee, but my Father which is in heaven. He downloaded it. Something we can relate to in this technological world we live in now. And this is pre the cross. Jesus hadn't went yet. This is just during his earthly ministry, bless God. One of the He said, Boy, you blessed, son. You know, you ain't even born into my kingdom yet. And the Father's already wrapping with you. You realize that I am the anointed one. And you just got a glimmer of what the anointing can do. Amen. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And notice this. What are we talking about? Soul gates. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And the rock, the solid rock, is the revelation of God's word. Okay? We are Cornerstone Church. And Him being the chief cornerstone, bless God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah, that's right. You can build no greater foundation, beloved. Excuse me. You can build no greater building than the foundation that's laid deep. Therefore, you want to build your life on the rock. You want to build it on the revelation of the anointed one and His anointing and on the word of God. Because when the winds come and the rains blow and uh, the storms uh, they come, and they're coming, you can't get, you can't live in this life without them. You already know that. Those of you watching me, everybody knows it. If you're, if you if you this house, see, this is called your house. We're not talking, plus your other house better be on a good foundation too. And you might better have some flood insurance, and you might better have some fire insurance. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. But watch. If your life is not built on a proper foundation, you let the enemy have access. If you don't guard the gates of your soul, a 
okay? And I was going to sing that song, I'm a soul man, because I knew that catch them. If I started doing that, they wouldn't, they wouldn't turn it off. I am a soul man. Amen. I should have done that. Though. The pastor says, if you can get them in the first couple of minutes, they'll stay tuned up. <laughs> you won't fall. You won't fail. But the bottom line is, or though you do, the Lord will lift you up. Amen? Yeah. Okay. Jesus says right here that the gates of hell should not prevail against them. And I will give unto thee, look what he told him by this revelation, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven because of the anointing that would be on them, seeing on us. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. <coughs> this is just tied to the message that we also have on there, the authority of the believer. I advise you to go look at those messages. The authority of the believer. Amen. All right, and then finally, verse 20. Then he gave him charge. When I got ordained, my pastor gave me a charge. Jesus did this too. He says, he charged his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus, the Christ. Notice it started up the Son of Man. Okay? But he wanted them for right now. You just hold on to this. Okay? Now, let's look at this. Just jump down to verse 24. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, you're in the same chapter, verse 16, if any man, or any man or any woman, will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life for my name's sake shall find it. We also had a teaching on that. Okay? Verse 26, for what is a man profited, or what's it profit a man, if he should gain the whole world, and notice what he says here, interesting, and lose his own soul. Notice Jesus magnified the soul part of the man. Why didn't he say something else like, uh, you know, your spirit would be corrupted? You know what I mean? Or, just anything. No. One thing I learned about God, God doesn't do nothing for nothing. He doesn't say nothing for nothing, and particularly Jesus don't. That's right. Because it is totally an accurate word of prophecy. That's right. Okay? Revelation tells us that it is Jesus speaking. It's the, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. It's Jesus speaking. Amen? Or oh, what shall a man give in exchange, look at this too, for his soul. Two times there in that in verse 26, it says, what's it profit, and look look how, and I've, and I've been there. God, the Lord always do this in my own life. He doesn't have a problem with having things, he just wants things to have you. At one time in my life I made millions of dollars. I don't say that arrogant, I did. I just put it out there. I used to live in a 1.6 million dollar home. Okay? It wasn't fully paid for. I put down a half a million dollars on it, okay? A little bit more than that, actually. I had a million dollar mortgage. Now, you want to talk about having to believe God? My house payment was $8,300 a month. And I lived there for three and a half years, okay? And never missed a payment. But you know what? I wasn't happy, ultimately. I had to work a long time to get to that. Just breaking into the Old Testament. I did not say that to bring attention to myself. I never talked about it. Even members among our church, they don't, they don't know everything about my past life, obviously. Before that, I lived in a very expensive. For years, I, I, I lived in a situation where I lived in plenty. And, and but now I'm going to tell you this: God brought it to me. God, it was God that gave the increase. And I was a giver, and I was a sower, and I learned about the principles that govern this kingdom in that area, and God blessed me. And I was able to bless the ministry of Jesus Christ back with it. I was faithful to do that. But at the same time, I should thank you, Lord. I shared quite a while back in one of our broadcasts. In fact, I think it was back when we were teaching on biblical get on us. My pastor had me come in here. We were doing Thursday night meetings, and we were just teaching on that stewardship uh, lessons. And I shared the true story how for years, going this dates way back into my life, you know, because I got born again young at eight, and I filled with the Holy Ghost at 19, I've shared that story. 
But when I rededicated my life to the Lord and this, that, and the other, I would ride around and just be communi you know, communing or talking to the Lord at times. And that scripture it would come up in my spirit all the time. You know, what's it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What's it profit a man, you know, you know and, and, or in this one too, yeah. If you lose, this was the biggie. If you lose your life, you'll find it. But if you find your life, you'll lose it. And I'm like, what does he mean by that? That used to bug me. <laughs> well, I found out, look, you can climb the ladder of success only to lean it against the wrong wall. Hey, Amen. That's good. What's it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Mm -hmm. So those of you that are watching by way of this video, I was I was a born entrepreneur. God made me that way. Okay? I'm all about that. And God's all about it. God's about multiplication. God's about prosperity. It's all over his word. Okay? In fact, we're going to look at it, 3 John 2, because interestingly enough, we'll quote it. Beloved, above all things, I want you to prosper, and I want you to be, be in good health. But notice this. Even as thy soul, soul. prosper. Oh, you mean there could be a soul prospering? If you want the other thing to happen, you better be prospering in your soul or you will not see the material prosperity that you're after. Okay? John, that was one of John, the Apostle John's top rank, most anointed prayers, he penned the book of Revelation. John wrote that. John the Beloved. Okay, I digress. So at any rate, but what is the profit of man that he should gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? All right. Uh, all right. Let's, now let's do this. We'll find, I think you'll find this interesting. Let's go over to Isaiah. The 53rd chapter should be very familiar. It will be very familiar, obviously, to, to believers or people that are born again. To the lost, you need to hear this anyway. But many times when we hear about this, and of course, this is about you know the Lord's uh, you know the Lord going to the cross and the price He paid on Calvary for us. But often, when this is taught on, a lot of times it's just quoted, and and that's okay. And it's good if somebody has it in their spirit enough they can just quote it. You know what I mean? They'll quote the first part of this, but they don't read all the way down into it about what Jesus wrought bought and paid for and took care of on Calvary and why he did it. So we're going to break in at verse 1, Isaiah 53 and we'll just break in at verse 1. When you're there, say, I have it. I have it. All right. Who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up, this is talking about Jesus, before him is a tender plant and is a root out of dry ground. He has no form of commonness and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with griefs. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, that means our sins, and he was bruised for our iniquities, that's the internal thing or the rebellious part of us that causes us to sin. The chastisement of our peace of mind about all that was upon him. And with his stripes, we're healed. He bore stripes on his body that we could, we could be healed. Now let's go further, verse 6. All we, notice the word all, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity, notice that, of us all. He was oppressed, verse 7, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Plus, if he'd open his mouth and cried out, <laughs> that's a whole other message. Yeah. That, would have, that would have undone the work that he was up there to do. Yeah. Thank God he did it. I'll tell you, it was a miracle. If you don't believe in miracles, 
It's a miracle I'm getting through this and not crying, but I've asked the Lord not to do it. The whole time I've been reading this, I've been going, help me not cry, help me not cry, help me not cry. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? Us. For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken for their sin. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his mouth. Yes. Learned a lot about that when we taught him. Watch your mouth. Yet it pleased, or the cross reference means it's satisfied, if you will, in the courtroom of heaven. All right? It pleased or satisfied the Lord to bruising. Notice the, mm -hmm. the internal condition. Now, again, the soul is, in the, is an internal part of our being and makeup. You understand that? Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when thou shalt make, uh-oh, here we go. Look at verse 10. His soul an offering for sin. See how that's why it's so important we read all the way down into Scripture and don't read just part of a Scripture. You understand that? Yes. I'm a Bible teacher, so I'm teaching you. <laughs> okay? It's my, it's my job, and I like it. That's worth repeating. Yet it satisfied the Lord to bruising talking about that internal condition he has put him to grief when thou shall make his soul an offering for sin he shall see his seed that's us he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand look at verse 11 he shall see of the travail of what? The of the soul see on the cross Jesus was wounded yet for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement or a peace of mind was upon him. And by his stripes were healed. But there's a tremendous amount he had to do here with a soul offering. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify the many. For he shall bear their iniquities. Look at verse 12. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul. See it there? Unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sins of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. In fact, now he forever lives and heaven to continue to make intercession for the saints. Bless God in heaven. Amen. And you say amen. amen. All right. Jeez. Glory to God. All right. Let's look at Matthew 6. A little note there. Let's see what's up with that. Just two little verses of scripture. Matthew 6. Let's look at verses 22 and 23. And then we're going to get into a little bit. I'm just going to talk to you a little bit. Uh, and give you an explanation of the soul gates and the gates of the soul and how the enemy gets in and, and a better understanding of, 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 of not only watching for your soul but how to stand guard and, and understand like I say that's the entryway into our life. I'll read this and then the Lord just give it to me in a good way to explain it. Okay, here we go. Verse 22, Matthew 6, 22. The light, now remember, I told you it comes in two ways, the eye gate and the ear gate. What I want you to focus on now is think about your eyes, the eye gate, the eye gate. Now Jesus is speaking here, this is in red, amen? The light of the body is the eye. If therefore the eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. Verse 23, but if the eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. That eye gate is to the soul. This is why we must be careful, particularly as believers, what we listen to. Now back, and I don't want to get on a COVID thing. I, I said all along how I feel about that. Look here. I'm a believer. Say I'm a believer. I'm, I'm not a doubter. 
Not a doubter. I believe that Jesus bore my sickness. For my sickness. All of my diseases. All of my diseases. Bless God on Calvary. Bless God on Calvary. I have the authority of the believer. I have the authority. I just heard from God's word earlier. I just heard from God's word earlier. That he told Peter. He told Peter. And me. And me. That whatever we bind on earth. Whatever we bind Will be bound in heaven. Will be bound in heaven. And whatever we loose on earth. Whatever we loose on Will be loose will be loose. And, and that's right. That's Amen. right. Whatever we loose and on heaven, be loose on earth, whatever. <laughs> I'm so excited I can't talk. Via is anointed. And that anointing is in us. If we are in Christ, the word in Christ appears 200 something times, I think, in the New Testament. Okay? In Christ, in whom, etc. We're in him, and he's in us. Amen? All right. Praise God. So, that was Matthew 6, 22, 23. Now, let's talk about to the ear, okay, as well. We'll move off the eye gate for a minute and then the ear gate. Thank you, Lord, again for quick remembrance. Let's take this podium area and make it like a fence is around it. And of course, I'm in, I'm in that fence, okay? Okay? And there's a gate follow me honey okay and I'm not flirting with the members this is my wife mm -hmm. I want to stand up closer with okay. and get a visual I want you to visualize this in your mind's eye as I explain it to you okay visualize a gate being before me okay and the fence or the parameter around my life it's the Holy Spirit. Yes. It'll live. It's the Spirit of God. His hand on my life. Or our life. But there's this gate there. And because of free will, see if you're willing and obedient, you get to eat the good of the Lamb. That's right. Amen. Amen. But because God is not a dictator and he's given us a free will and we're free moral agents, though we are born into God's kingdom, filled with the Holy Spirit, can speak in other tongues, at any time I want, I need to watch. I need to be the watchman. I need to be on guard like when I was in the Marines over that gate. I can take my hand and I can open that gate devil will fly right through there. When I say open that gate, not, not just open anything. I open it to the door of pornography. I just happen to use that. I open it. I learned something the other day that helped me a lot. I taught on, on lust. We had a thing on that, on the spirit of love, about lust. I learned from a, a great man of God here a few weeks ago, and, and uh, I borrowed it, and I'm going to keep it forever. He says, you don't have a lust problem you have a looking problem. Mm -hmm. Sink the eye gate. Mm -hmm. He said, people, they don't, he admitted, and he's, he's a great man of God, but I don't, I don't throw a lot of names out unless the Lord allows me to do it. But mm -hmm. he, he, he's, he's a real deal. He's got a very successful church. Not that that makes anything any small, big, doesn't change the anointing, it doesn't change the work of God. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, this man is touching many, many lives. Why am I bringing that up? I love it when men of God will be transparent. He had a problem in this area. That's why he's so effective about teaching on it. If you've had a problem and you and the Spirit of God has helped you overcome it, you're better at teaching people, and you'll have, and they'll listen to you. That's why it was so powerful when I let Matt speak. All right, from the from the audio, even though he's already in heaven, because he'd been there, done that, got the T-shirt. People listen to that. There was people that could ID with that. Okay? We have to, we have been given the privilege of choice. Thank you, Lord. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. I've set before you life and death, 
blessings and cursings. Therefore, choose life that you and your children may live. Who makes the choice? We do. We do. God don't make it for us. He won't make you come to the crawl, to, to the altar. He won't make you receive him. He wants you to do it. God won't make you do a thing. He'll enable you to do a thing. But when you get born into his kingdom, the Holy Spirit gives you the power, the anointing, the grace, the enablement, the mercy, the ability to repent, all of that, the blood of Jesus, <laughs> everything comes with it. But though all that's available, back to this around me, I have to take like a force field around my life and daily in my life, nightly in my life. Pastor's already started this. He, they got rid of cable and all that. And I shared a story one time. I, I did do this, and, I, and I'm, I'm getting more and more convicted about it. I need, to, I need to just, I need to go back and do it, start doing it again. When God really, really, uh, really, really started to move powerfully in my life, and it was through a choice I made. And it was called the choice of rededication. That's repairing any breach or anything caused by sin. Okay? It's called, there is a thing called rededication. Okay? When I rededicated my life to the Lord back in my mid 30s, and I took and did some things before the Lord. Um, Bottom line, got some things covered in the blood and basically made a covenant with God. The power that came out of that was absolutely incredible. And that was just the act of my free will. The, mo the moment that I made that step or that action step to be obedient to God is like not only did his enablement come to help me break off and beat some addiction problems and different things that happened in my life, but doors of opportunity opened, ministry opened, his word became a lot. He just flooded right back into my life. Just through simple obedience. Because what happened, I'd had that gate open. I closed that gate. Yeah. I closed that door on the devil. Yeah. Now, we've heard it called the devil's door, but tonight I'm, I'm using the word gate because it's in the scriptural. It's in there. Now, there's scripture about the door. Jesus said, I am the door. Any man knocks, I'll open, come in, sup with him, etc. Mm -hmm. But we must, we are the keeper of the gate. We're the one that stands there with the whole armor of God on. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that we can take and handle all of the fiery darts, all of the attacks of the enemy. Can you say amen? Amen. All right, praise God. So, that's that. Okay. <clears throat> Romans 10, 17 says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It says faith, in fact, the Bible says faith is a little substance. It's a substance of the thing that we hope for and the evidence of things not seen is in your Bible. Okay? So, what I started to say earlier is to go along with what I, I just said a minute ago about the blessing that came by me closing that door is that I cut off the television. One of the things I did, I quit watching any secular television for three years. Not three months, three years. For three years, the only thing, when I turned on a TV, when I came home from work, I went so far as I took one to my office. I had two different stores at the time. But I took one to one of my businesses, and there was a broadcast that came on. Back then, it was an hour broadcast. It came on at 10 o'clock and went off at 11. And I told, let all my employees, I let every one of them, they were all put on notice, they knew. During that hour, I, that, you don't bother Brother Jim. You don't bother Jimmy. I don't care. You know what I mean? If, if airplanes is dropping, uh, you know, thousand dollar bills out of the sky, don't bother Jimmy during that hour. Because I couldn't get just enough at night. I wanted to catch it during the day. I seen the same broadcast in the evening, but I wanted to. I was feeding my faith and starving my doubts to death. 
This has to do with soul, the soul gates. Yeah. I was controlling my eye gates. Yeah. See, this is why David got in trouble. Mm -hmm. What did he say later? I made a covenant with my eyes. Yeah. What did Jesus say about eyes? Come and buy eyes set for your eyes, saith the Lord. It's all over the Bible. That's what got him in trouble. He didn't have a lust problem and a looking problem. Now he had both. But how he here's how he could conquer his lust problem. The looking problem. Don't look. Honey, if you got a drinking problem, I don't think I don't think the way to overcome it is to uh, be going to parties where there where alcohol's ever. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, just quit going where it is. You'd be surprised how you can all of a sudden defeat alcoholism. Mm -hmm. Just don't go to the bar no more. Yeah. Don't go around it. My wife and I, Terry, <laughs> bless her heart, she's good enough to even do this one. Now I've gotten used to it. In the early part of our marriage, you know, something I kind of just, you know, I, I just went along with it, okay? I mean, just being honest, I just went along with it. Because I'd already committed to not drink anymore. I'd stopped drinking and this, that, and the other. And a lot of times, you know, this particular pre-COVID, you know, you can get a seat quicker at the bar, or near the bar, or whatever. No, 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 no. <laughs> Before I could even get out of my mouth, the host would come up with, okay, Anywhere, not near a bar. Even to this day, when I go in a restaurant, well, I should say, we go in a restaurant, and even if I go alone, and a lot of, you know, a lot of nice restaurants have a real nice, a real nice bar, because people are going to drink. <laughs> it's just life. Okay? But the bottom line is, I do not sit in the bar area. Well, there's a scripture to see. Oh, yeah, don't give place to the devil. See, we always think of big things. Jesus didn't say it was big things. He said it's the little fox. See, they're like little foxes. Yeah. That spoil the vine. And who's the vine? He is. And we talk about the branches and the fruit. You know, it cannot bear fruit of itself. John 15, I think it is, abide in me. A lot of my words abide in you. You ask what you will and be given unto you. It's abiding in him. Okay, but I, I, I love that and, and the Lord ministered with me with that more he said I'm not going to don't let that slip what that man of God said about that and you know it's like a lot of things I'll go back to certain teachings I've had I thought oh man I wish I would have rejected that in fact thank you Lord to get a new one now it has nothing to do with this teaching but well, in a way it does uh, when I taught last week about the harvest I uh, taught on the wheat and tares. The one thing I left out, see, it's going to help me. I can excel. One thing about them, they look the same. I left that out of the teaching. When they grow up, he talked about he'd gather them in bundles later. Because he said, should we, uh, he, an enemy came in and did this. And, the, and they went to him and said, Master, what should we do? Should we, you want us to take them up now? He said, no, no, no. Wait till the harvest. Then I'll separate them. Now I know why, too. The Lord did two things for me. One, he let me get that off my chest and throw that out there because I missed it on the last week's teaching. Okay? But there's another reason he did that. It has to do with subtlety. See, even as, as a believer, as I said, as a believer in this end-time harvest period more than ever and all that's going on out here in the world and among us and around us, you have to be circumspect. That word means to have eyes all the way around your head. We have to be careful about the false things, things that appear to be real even among other believers in Christian circles. Because it's when Jesus said it, well, you we know, prophesy in your name, we cast out devils, we do many mighty work, blah, blah, blah. But depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. So we must, we, it's very easy 
to kind of cross the line. Say there's a line here to cross. To have one foot in the world, one foot in the kingdom. And, and you can't, you're not going to have success in spiritual things that way. And it's what it's going to lead to is temptation. That's right. Is temptation. And if, and if a person is not careful, a believer, and I just say a person, sin is conceived when they give in to the temptation. Being tempted is not every. The Bible says every man is tempted. You know, it's tempted, but when he's drawn away with his own lust, yes, okay. that's when it becomes sin. That's when it becomes a problem. The bottom line is, you can be a person that loves God with all your heart. I'm just going to be this transparent old baby. I'm going to say it just like this, just this plain. You can love God with all your heart, but you start looking at the wrong things and listening to the wrong things. I've said before, whatever you meditate on, you will perpetuate that's right. in your life. Good. That's why I told Joshua, meditate in my word day and night. You'll make your way prosperous and you'll have good success. Yes. Why did he tell him to do that after Moses died? Mm -hmm. It's the eighth verse in Joshua chapter one. Right out of the gate. God's so bold. I mean, he, he, don't, he don't come up there with Joshua too good. <laughs> Let's have a minute together. You know how much I love Moses. I even buried him. He died this morning. No, he went, my servant Moses is dead. Come here. I got something to tell you to do. Amen. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Pretty pretty blunt. Yeah. And he's cool. He's with me, but he's dead. You understand that? Therefore, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take these people that have been murmuring, complaining, acting fool for 40 years, and I'm going to let you be the one privilege to take them on into the promised land. But wait a minute. Here's how you get it done. Meditate in my promise. The Holy Bible, I might add. Day and night. Isn't it interesting, too? He told Joshua to do it day and night. Yeah. Well, you know, you might get around to it. You know, I'm too tired to read it at night. Um, you know. Pastor will tell me what it needs Sunday. I just get it Sunday. You gotta get it for yourself. That's right. You gotta live in the word. Yes, that's good. You gotta live in it. And you have to live it. Yes. You don't have to, you get to. Because here's this gate. It's the soul gate. It's the gate to your soul, and that's what the devil's after. Wow. He wants to come to the soulless part of your life. He wants to come into your remote. See, what happens is when you look at improper things, it's enticing to your emotions. Where does that lie? In the soul realm. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about a familiar verse of Scripture in Romans 12 too. Don't be conformed to the world or the world's way, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the Bible says that's accomplished by the washing of the water of the Word of God. And I said before another broadcast, I mean, we need to be brainwashed. I mean, get brainwashed, but but by way of the Word. Yeah, we need a washing. But said another way, remember Jesus said right here. Okay, thank you, Lord. Let me do it again. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore the eye be single, see it's singleness too. It's not double. Thank you. A double-minded man or a woman is unstable in all their ways. You can't be double. And it says, tell them, don't think they'll receive anything of the Lord. God isn't double. There's no variable that's a turning in. Yeah. Same yesterday, day, forever, all that's in the Bible. But guess what? God does not, I am the Lord thy God, I change not. And his goal in us is for us to get that way. Now, will we ever be him until we get to be with him and all that? No, of course not. But our goal should, should, by way of help of the Holy Spirit, live the God kind of life and live like him in the world. Live in the world and not of the world. The light of the body is eye. Therefore, the eye be single. The whole body shall be full of light. 
who is the light of the world. Amen. Jesus. So let your light shine. I wish I could say I do that all the time. I don't. My wife's better at it than me. Now, I'm not saying she don't ever miss it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> She'd be the first to tell you. But bless God, she is better at it than me. And she helps me. You see, as iron sharpens iron, a sister of sharpens brother. <laughs> but if the eye be evil, pause. I hear the Lord say, pause. How does the eye get evil? By looking at evil. That's right. You start looking at evil, be careful. <laughs> the big... One of the biggest things, it's a tragedy, really. And this is going to be, man, I'm telling you, this whole, what do you think, this great falling away business, how, why do you think that happens? Well, how can you fall out of something that you weren't in? It, the, the Word of God says there must, there's going to be first a great falling away. It's part of one of the signs of the coming of the Lord. Well, this is talking to people that had to be in the body of Christ. Yes. But they started looking at, dealing with, messing around with things that they didn't have no business messing around with. That's true. And then Pastor Ruth liked this. She wrote it down. She cornered me she, after, after a service, and I appreciated that. She said, what was that, Jimmy, you said again? She wrote it down. So now I'm going to repeat. So you sow a look. You reap a thought. Soul. Now, we're talking about soul and the gate. Yeah, you sow a look. What I say? You got a lust for me looking for it. You sow a look. You reap a thought. Because, see, everything in this world, beloved, is sowing and reaping, whether you believe it or not. God said, I won't be mocked about it. Whatsoever a man soweth, yeah. That shall he reap, the Amplify says, and that and that only. Yes. Mocking. It's mocking God. Yeah. You sow a look, you'll reap a sneeze. No, I mean you'll reap a thought. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You sow a thought, okay, you reap an act. You sow an act, in other words, you act on that thought. You say, first you sow to look. And he started meditating on it. Next thing, you, you, the meditates, the, now you're thinking about it. You sow a thought. Next thing you know, well, it's, only, it's only one beer or whatever. You know, or I didn't mean to kiss him. <laughs> See, people don't like to get down where we really live. Like, they don't really happen. Yeah. Oh, it does. Mm -hmm. Oh, it happens right in church. Yeah. Don't think it don't happen. Yeah. You know, Hubby or the white, either one ain't been paying enough attention for a long time, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you get cozy, and that things happen. Another great man of God of mine told me one time, he said, he taught me straight up. He said, I'm telling you, of course, I'm not a pastor. Bless God, I got a good one. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm glad I'm a teacher. I'm not saying I'm not open to pastoring someday, but thank God right now, I've got a great pastor. I don't like to pastor. But as a teacher, I do counsel and I do mentor, but I will not mentor a woman alone, Amen. and neither did Billy Graham. That's right. One of the greatest evangelists that ever lived, he didn't just have those men and all go in there and sweep the room and make sure the hotel rooms were all clear and this, that, and the other, because he just had a weakness or propensity toward the opposite sex, or because he thought there was going to be a scandal, and there would have been, that there might be a plant there, and then they could use it like the world does and get it broadcasted all over television and say, hey, we done caught the great Billy Graham, Billy Graham in a hotel room with a woman. Sure, that was part of it, but it was not the reason. I'm doing this in the video art. It was not, beloved, the reason. And this man of God who taught me this principle, watch this, in a ministry school, a school of ministerial and educational training. I learned this. You know, I'm thinking I'm going to be involved in this thing, learn a bunch of stuff about scripture and how to preach them. No. The man all he talked about was character. How to conduct yourself, how to act, how to be a man or a woman of God. He said, do you understand the word never, never counsel 
a person of the opposite sex, alone. even a man, alone. Amen. Have either, if you're married, your wife present. That's right. Have family present, uh, your pastor's pre present, if you're not the pastor. If you are a pastor, let your wife counselor. Mm -hmm. You follow me? This man of God, his wife, who is the pastor too, she counseled all the women. Now, we sat in a counseling session the other day. Now, we had a problem. We just had something we wanted to discuss with our pastors. Well, guess what? Both Pastor Ronnie and Pastor Ruth and me and my wife were in the room. That's okay. Yeah. We're all there. That's right. But do not escape the point, and then we'll close because we're running out of time. He did that because it's called don't give place to the devil. It was wisdom. That's right. He did that throughout his entire life in ministry because he went all over the world and millions and millions and millions of people, thank God, came to the Lord through that man of God. But I'm telling you, the Lord is the one that had him do that, that act of obedience. He would not do it. And this man of God told me that too. And, and, and I got a lot of mileage off of that. He said, don't put yourself in that position for those two reasons. One, appearance is perception alone. But secondly, why put yourself in that position? Can you say, man, listen, I want to tell you something. Till the next time we get, we run out of time. Till the next time, we'll pick us up next week. The next time we get together around God's word, I tell you every week, I want you to know something. God's crazy about you. God loves you. We love you here too, here at Cornerstone Church. And I want you to remember something. Jesus, our Jesus, my Jesus, make it personal. He's Lord. Amen. 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 That's right.